At long last, the final guests were seated in the rear of the room, and the servants shut the gilded doors. It hadn't seemed possible before, but the air grew more stifling. Bartholomew Westerfeld paced up the aisle from the rear of the room, rubbing his hands together. He tossed his head a bit to clear a thick lock of wavy chestnut hair from his eyes. The people in the audience who had never seen him before gasped. On the outside of his trousers was a cage of shining brass for each leg, with gears at the knee that allowed him to bend his legs. His gait was slow and jerky, but he still smiled at anyone who would meet his eyes. Arabella had heard word of his disability before the party. According to rumors, he had suffered through some sort of a fever when he was a child that left his legs too weak to hold up the weight of his body. Depending on which rumor you chose to believe, either the healing witch who attended him had worked a miracle that he even survived and had some movement in his legs, or she had completely botched the spells and left a once healthy boy crippled. Westerfeld stopped in front of the curtains and gazed at them for a moment with proprietary gleam in his eye. Then he turned to his guests with a smile. "'Ladies and gentlemen, members of Parliament and noble witches,' he began, spreading his arms in an oratorical gesture. "'Thank you for consenting to attend my humble little party.' He chuckled at his own joke, well aware that this event had been one of the most sought-after invitations of the season. "'I do hope that you will consider your time well invested. "'For this very evening,' he continued, "'I shall show you a marvel for the ages, "'a spectacle such that you shall be proud to recount this evening "'to your children's children. "'So, without further ado,' "'the crowd murmured and chattered to each other, as he turned and took two steps to the golden tasseled ropes on the edge of the green curtains. Westerfeld gave the golden rope a great yank, and the curtains rose with surprising speed. The whole of the dais behind the curtains was filled with a huge machine composed of gleaming copper, brass, and steel pipes, levers, and gears. The broad rectangular shape captivated most of the audience eliciting gasps and cries of astonishment and even a few small cheers from the more technophilic. Minerva Sordelesh, however, appeared less than amused. Witchery and technology were uncomfortable neighbors at best, and more often could be considered bitter enemies locked in cold detente. The mundane masses of the world desired the advances of technology to make their miserable lives less miserable, and perhaps slightly less dependent on the magical assistance and guidance provided by witches. The Council of Witches maintained that technology was a danger to the natural world, the same world that they drew their power from. Parliament remained divided, usually right along the lines of families who were tied closely to witches, by blood or by marriage, and those who were not. Bartholomew Westerfeld had to know that Lady Blackstone and all the other witches in attendance would not be happy to have wasted an evening on some technological toy in which they had no interest. Had it been known that this monstrosity would be the wonder Westerfeld had promised, not a single witch would have accepted the invitation. Minerva frowned deep, deeply and fanned herself harder. Minerva frowned deeply and fanned herself harder, not quite willing to give such insult as to get up and walk out, but it was a near thing. It was only the recent kerfuffle with the Iris witches that kept her in her seat. There was only so much rudeness that would be tolerated in a single evening, even from the most powerful witch in the civilized world. However, if Minerva had not been so absorbed in her own peak, and her other daughters so focused on the harsh emotions seeping from the tight control of her shield, they might have noticed Arabella, and therefore had more of a notion of what was to come. Arabella sat on the very edge of her seat, 
back ramrod straight and hands clutched white-knuckled in her lap. Her mouth hung open and her breath came in short, small gasps. Her wide eyes focused on the machinery in front of her. To Arabella, the vision of metal and cogs and levers in front of her was the most divinely beautiful thing she'd ever seen. It didn't just gleam from the care of machinists with their oil cans and their burnishing cloths. It glowed with its own inner light. Arabella wanted to leap forward and stroke it and find out whether it would make her hands tingle like she thought it might.